got a little wild at the White House today. We've put together some, but not all of it in a montage. We'll talk about it on the other side. Are you worried? That's enough. That's Mr. enough. Mr. President, I, well, That's I was going to ask one of the, the other folks. That's that had, enough. Pardon me, ma'am. I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. In Jim's defense, I've traveled with him and watched him. He's a diligent reporter who's lost well, his Well, I'm not a big fan of yours either. When you report fake news, no. When you report fake news, which CNN does a lot, you are the enemy of the people. You called yourself a nationalist. Some people saw that as emboldening white nationalists. Now people are also I saying that the that. president... such a racist There are some Again, just some of the greatest hits of what we witnessed. And obviously that first clip, Jim Acosta from CNN, a young White House intern trying to grab the mic from him, has tonight resulted in the press pass of Jim Acosta being pulled at the White House. He can no longer get on the White House grounds. And in their statement as a justification, they said that Jim Acosta placed his hands on a young woman just trying to do her job as a White House intern. And they stand by their decision. Um, Jill Colvin, uh, I did see Joe Lockhart, former Clinton era press uh, secretary, say tonight he was complimenting CNN on their restraint because they have not redone their coverage. They're not leading all hours with their own correspondent, Jim Acosta. They're staying on the story, which is the firing of Sessions and the result of the midterms, just in case, just in case this is a giant distraction. Yeah, when that, that the story broke, I think Anderson Cooper was just about to start, and you know, I think a lot of us tuned in to see what CNN's response would be, and they waited until well into the show to have Jim Acosta come and talk about what had happened. I think that's an acknowledgement of the fact that we know, look, this is an administration that has long had a very tense relationship with the press. Uh, even during the campaign, uh, the president, uh, then candidate, was revoking reporters' press credentials, banning numerous outlets from uh, the Washington Post to Politico from covering his events, but I think what you're seeing here is also an acknowledgement that the president often uses these fights that he picks with the media to distract from certain storylines that he doesn't want being covered. And what is the news tonight? It is his decision to ask for Jeff Sessions' resignation. And the White House knows that if they push these buttons and they go after the press, the press is going to react and respond, as you've seen tonight, and that that will change the direction of the coverage. Uh, Peter Baker, I've been a hard pass holder twice in my life. The first, dare I say, as a White House intern in the late 70s. Second time, mid-90s, as White House correspondent. You've been a hard pass holder for many years. Um, it is difficult to remember seeing one pulled, losing privileges to come onto the White House grounds for something like this. Yeah, no, exactly right. I got my first hard pass 22 years ago, and I don't remember any time, any time the reporter has had his pass or her pass pulled because of the way they do their job. This is a, a new, new step. It's one that's obviously very troubling. And look, you know, uh, I think Jill's exactly right. This is what they want. If they think Jim Acosta is so unfair to them, why did the president call on him? They called on him because they wanted to have the confrontation. They want to have this be uh, the scenes that people see and they say, see, he's standing up to the to the unfair press. Uh, why did he go after Yamish Alcindor? He did nothing but ask a very legitimate, very serious, very sober question of him. And he didn't even wait for her to finish before he starts calling her a racist. So this is what he wants. This is what this White House wants. And I think the problem for the press is we have to be careful not to play into it. The story shouldn't be about us. It should be about Jeff Sessions. It should be about the President of the United States. It shouldn't be about the elections from yesterday. Uh, and instead, we're talking about uh, this kind of an action. But it is the first action that they've taken that I remember uh, that directly punishes a reporter uh, since, you know, since taking office. There's one or two other times, I think, where they kind of came close to that. They excluded a reporter from one particular pool spray and so forth. This is a big deal, unfortunately, and it is, in fact, going to be something we talk about in the days to come when we have other things we should be. And let's say a word on behalf of this White House intern in question. She very gamely had to deal with a highly uncomfortable uh, circumstance. She did not come to work at her unpaid job this morning thinking she was going to end up part of a news story. She tries uh, politely at first, and then she goes in uh, to grab at that microphone, uh, putting her in an awfully uncomfortable position as well. Well, tomorrow, uh, yes, Peter? 
No, it's an awkward, it's an awkward situation all around. No question, she didn't do anything. She wasn't trying. She was trying to do her job. But you can clearly see from that video that Jim did not put hands on her the way yeah. they are implying. He somehow, you know, rudely assaulted her. He didn't. He specifically said, "Pardon me, ma'am." He was not. You know, you could say you can, whatever you want about his behavior, but the truth of the matter is, the White House shouldn't get to decide who pick, who chooses. Sorry, shouldn't get to decide who covers them based on whether they like a reporter's behavior or not. That's not the way it works. Important points to make here tonight. With our thanks to Peter Baker and Jill Colvin, two veterans of the beat, we appreciate you joining.